First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that's prayed, man, and sent me messages. I cannot even begin to tell you um, how, how far it took me and how, how it brought me back. Um, uh, I went through something that I thought I would never, ever go through. Uh, and I know a lot of people were waiting, you know, or wanting to hear updates, but to be honest with you, I just didn't want you to see me like that, man. You know, I want you to see me laughing, having a good time, partying, cracking a joke, doing a movie, television show. I didn't want you to see me with uh, with tubes um, running out of me and and trying to figure out uh, if if I was gonna make it through. And to be honest with you, my uh, my sister Deidre Dixon, my daughter Corinne Marie saved my life. So. Uh, to them, to God, to a lot of great medical people, uh, I'm able to leave you this uh, video. I cannot tell you how great it feels to have your family kick in in such a way. And, and y'all know they kept it airtight. They didn't let nothing out. They protected me. And that's what I hope that everyone could have in moments like these. You have to understand, it was a big deal where people were trying to understand what was going on with him. Did he have a nervous breakdown? Was he on drugs? Because it just happened out the blue and he was gone for so long that all we had was speculation. So it feels good to look at him that he actually has his health and it doesn't look like he passed away. Because for a while, people actually thought he passed away. Uh, now, you know, by being quiet... Sometimes things, you know, get out of hand. People saying what I got. Some people said I was, I was blind. But as you can see, uh, as you can see, the eyes are working. The eyes are working just fine. Uh, said I was paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed. Uh, but I did go through. I went to hell and back. And my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. But um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming back, and uh, I'm able to work. So I want to thank. Uh, uh, the people that let me work, um, and I just want to like say uh, I, that I that I, I love everybody, and I love all of the love that I got. And man, you know, I know they talk about people crying on videos. You know, you could do take two, but I'm not gonna do a take two. This is, it is what it is. And if you see me out uh, from now on, and every once in a while, I just burst into tears, is because. Um, it's been tough, man. I was sick, man. But now I got my legs out, uh, under me, so you're going to see me out. Uh, but like I said, I just want you to remember me for uh, the jokes that I crack, uh, the, the movies that I make. Some of them good, some of them ain't. I think I got a good one out. Uh, and the songs that I sing, man. And then, you know. It's good to see that he's back up and he's back doing good. What you have to understand is when you're an actor... It puts a lot of strain on your body because you have to maintain a character. I know personally because I went to acting school and after a play and after a skit, your body is really drained because you have to intensify your muscles, your facial expressions, the way you walk, talk and breathe. And you start to go through these things. It really drains you. When you're a big star like Jamie Foxx, then you're filming all year round that at some point your body starts to get burnt out. It starts to drain itself and they start to get sick but when you have the best doctors then the best doctors can prescribe you the right medicine that can keep you going that's all that's happening in Hollywood they're filming 16 hours out of the day and your body become completely exhausted and then at some point you crash that's pretty much what happened to Jamie Foxx here but there's another person who can explain it better and that's going to be Ice Cube lies with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of the club that pisses them off what club am I talking about I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got it a lot of people might say like well but kid you want to work with the NBA really I don't give a about working with the NBA. What I want them to do when I say work with us is to stop working against us. Stop doing that bullshit behind the scenes that we know you're doing. Um, 
mainstream media, you know, they ain't with it. What I'm gonna do is go on a the gatekeepers podcast tour and I'm gonna go talk to everybody. And Cube wasn't lying because over the past few weeks, he appeared on several podcasts. And one of the things he's exposing is the alleged agenda. Okay, what Ice Cube is trying to say in the interview is that if you're not part of the go along, get along gang, then all of a sudden things just start happening to you and it starts to happen to you in your life. It's like someone always loses a loved one whenever you're in Hollywood. Something freakish always happens within a person because that's what they're calling the sacrifice into the get along, get along gang, which AKA would be the Illuminati. So what he's saying is, is that Jamie Foxx didn't want to do what they wanted him to do and magic he ended up sick that's what's happening with him and people are wondering like why would it just happen out the blue it's because this is their way of trying to weasel you to do what they want same thing happened with Cosby and the same thing happened with a bunch of other people they can make you look like you're the worst person in the world they can make things look like an accident they can make it look real as possible even though they're constructing everything behind the scenes that's what's happening with Jamie Foxx, according to Ice Cube. But in my opinion, when it comes to Jamie Foxx, maybe he was sick, but when it comes to the Hollywood scene, there's a lot of stuff out there that'll just make you shake your head. But for some reason, people feel like if they could become a celebrity, then their life is going to be set. Why? Because they pay attention to the fortune and they pay attention to the fame and they fear losing and not being part of that. One thing that social media has done, it has allowed influencers to feel like a celebrity, live like a celebrity, but what they're not understanding is you would have to sell your soul as well. Like probably, like in Hollywood, if you're in the industry, the devil, the devil, they, like Illuminati, all that shit, they try to get you, especially when you got a big influence, you around that shit. They be try, they try to get anybody, but you just gotta be smart and have discernment and and have God's favor over you. Cause if you don't got that and you in Cali, you gonna get sucked in. And I agree with her. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people get sucked into this. And the reason why they get sucked into this is because a lot of people feel like they're getting closer to a fairy tale. People want what they can't have. They want to feel what they can't feel. So when people watch TV, they start to idolize because it's something you can't touch. It's something that you can't feel. So when you start getting in these big cities and you start getting around these crowds and, they, and you start to see people that you see on TV, now you start to see a fairy tale starts to come to life, right? So they start to actually feel like they're important the closer you start getting there. But in order to get in the industry, you have to be prepared to be anything that they want you to be. So they prefer that you be on drugs. They prefer that you be lost. They prefer that you be sick. They prefer that something is wrong with you so they can always get you and trap you in and make you into what they want you to be. Now, a lot of you guys, you've watched industry. You've watched the exposures and you and you may say, Anthony, we know this already. We've watched a lot of documentaries. We've seen a lot of people talk about it. We've seen this and we've seen that. Yeah, but you have also got to realize that you can catch this same buzz being somebody who's going to a local party. You have kids that are in high school that that do anything to go hang around the cool kids and get sucked in and ended up getting their life messed up. So it goes deeper. It goes all the way back down into gangs. You got kids that join gangs just to feel like they're part of something and they get swooped in and end up being the first ones getting killed. For sure. What are some of the ways they do try to mm. get to a person of oh, that magnitude? Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. What they do is they invite you to these parties, these house parties, and then they, they be like, oh, Woot the Woot gonna be there, like your favorite rapper, the big ass person. And Woot the Woot gonna be there. Oh, uh, before you get in, you gotta give us your phones and all this shit. And then, and then. Now, I can testify to that. 
pretty much any industry party that you go to, you're going to have to give up your phone. Like your phone and your jacket is going to check in at the same time. That's something that a lot of people, a lot of these rappers don't talk about that either. They don't talk about these industry parties that they go to where you got to walk in without a jacket. You can't have your cell phones. You got to ignore a lot of stuff and you have to sign the paperwork. That's something that they don't write about in the songs that actually happens in real life. They might do some gay shit to somebody and then, and then, and then like, and then like try to like and record it and tell them, Oh, if if you if you expose us, we gonna post it everywhere. And I know that from word of ear, but I know they do a lot of crazy shit in these in these house parties. And um, also, what I was about to say. Oh, okay. Let me tell you an experience I went through personally. So I was with some friends in LA, and it was this big influencer party. Shall I say a name? It was Bella Thorne party. So, so I got invited from some other friends. I, it was on Halloween. I already don't celebrate Halloween. That's the devil's day. But I happened to be with them and they was going. I was like, fuck it, let's go. So it already was a lot of signs. The, the party said you have to be half naked. I'm like, first of all, I ain't going half naked nowhere. Second of all, um, it was like a lot of signs that was adding up that night, like, the same night on Hollywood Boulevard, the party was off Hollywood Boulevard, some guy got shot and killed on Hollywood Boulevard, so the whole street was shut down, so that was another sign. So then we get to the party, you know, this is the beginning of all this COVID stuff, so we get up there, they talking about, um, oh yeah, you can't bring your phone in. I'm like, first of all, who ain't bringing their phone in? I'm bringing my motherfucking phone in, I don't give a fuck who you is. It could have been Kim Kardashian and I'm bringing my phone. And then you gotta sign some papers, what am I signing some shit for to get into a party? Like, See, when you sign the papers, right, you can't sue nobody for anything. That's what signing the papers are for is because they know that when you get inside of these parties, it's pretty much anything goes. One thing that I've learned about Hollywood, it's nothing but sex, drugs, and rock and roll. In order to get to the top, you have to kiss somebody's ass that's already at the top. That's one thing that I've learned about Hollywood is that you have to kiss ass to get to the top. Then when you get to the top, you got to turn around and have somebody kiss your ass in order to stay at the top. But when it comes to these type of parties, these type of parties are filled with sex and drugs due to the simple fact that they're always hazing somebody in. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing as a fraternity. It's the same as anything else that people want to be in. If you want to get to superstar status, you will have to sacrifice something. You ever notice that magically when most of these celebrities, something goes wrong, somebody's always dying around them. Some of your biggest celebrities always have somebody die that they can publicly put out and make money from. That becomes part of your brand. Stop and just think how many celebrities are famous, but you know somebody close to them that died. What? Like I'm from Atlanta. We don't do shit like that. And then... This is where it really threw me off. They said they had to prick your blood to get in. I said, oh no, I'm good. Everyone else went, I called my Uber and left. I've never really came across people who've said the, the blood thing, the blood thing. But I've met a lot of girls that have said that when they signed their paperwork, sex was inside the paperwork that they would freely do it and that they couldn't. They signed away rape. Like some of these contracts, women have to sign away rape and men understand that and men. But if you're a person, right, and you're weak in heart and you feel like, man, if I got this, then I'll be somebody. Or if I got this materialistic thing, I'll be somebody. Or if I was popular, then I'll feel like somebody. If you that type of person that deep down in your heart, you're willing to sell your soul just to feel that attention of feeling important, guess what? They're going to aim for you whenever you're in Hollywood. They're going to aim for you whenever you go to these parties because you're exposing yourself as the weakest link. I'm telling you, I've seen more people come into Hollywood and leave drug addicts. No one, think about it, even celebrities. No one as a celebrity, you do not live a happy life whatsoever. 
your entire life is broadcast and whenever you try to stop like you're going to work something just magically happened you have to understand this fame comes with a price attention comes with a price and the reason why it comes with a price is because people want popularity in order to just feel better than what they are they want to feel like a king they want to feel important the only downfall about it is you have to entertain the masses you have to be good enough for the masses the masses have to accept you which means that you're not allowed to be yourself you have to be what people want you to be i always tell you cardi b plays a stupid woman on tv she woke up a long time ago but when she sees how much money she makes being dumb then she continues to do it and people fall in love with that brand it's the same thing with some content creators like with me i teach you guys about women but if i was to wake up one day on this channel and just start talking about cars you're not going to want to see that because you came here for another subject right okay that's how hollywood is they're going to want you to play the subject or they're going to want you to play the character that everybody is going to look at and if you're willing to be any character that they want you to be then they promise you um money and prosperity it's just that when your soul is gone you would never get it back and the reason why you'll never get it back is because you never knew who you really were before you went for the fame like that's the shit where i think they be trying to get you and like if it's like like good thing about it, people move to la for a dream they chasing money fame clout whatever so they gotta think about it somebody so, so, like a, a, a young girl that's trying to get on and just moved out there. She going, oh, hell yeah, better throw it in there. You don't know who else in there, like, connect. She's right. Now, Hollywood get women the worst. They get women the worst. That's why, like, chicks like Britney Reiner, it's not a big deal to Hollywood stars because you have girls behind the scenes that are doing worse. The prettiest girl do the nastiest stuff in Hollywood. The prettiest girls do the nastiest stuff now at a college party. And, and, and let's say that the team won. You're gonna always find the sluttiest women are being the prettiest women because they want, they're willing to sell their soul for that fame and notoriety. If a woman makes you work for her, She's already gave it up to somebody with power for free. Understand that. Me, I'm I'm good. Like that shit gonna come naturally. I don't gotta prick my finger, take my blood to get into a party. If it's meant to happen, it's gonna happen. I'm not finna do no something, something like that. Now you did. Uh, the others mm -hmm. did actually attend that party. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what ended up happening at the party and things of that nature? Or? No, I didn't even ask them, and I don't judge them. Like, that's them. I can't help what they do. Um, yeah.